Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to Apostolic Children's Ministry Podcast. Today we have a full cast of characters. We have, uh, of course, I, I am me, and we have right here... Tristan. Uh, Brother Danny. Erica. Sister Leia. Bree. Sister Liz. Liz, you have not been on the podcast in a long time, so welcome back. We're so excited. You guys, we're clapping, but you can't hear it because we have new <laughs> microphones, and they're isolating, and that's wonderful. So we're actually yeah. really excited about the new setup last yeah. time. I, I mean, I, we got some feedback from, from, from some of them we'll talk about, and they seem to like it. But listening to it myself, I was like, oh, this is way better. Mm. You don't hear the AC when it kicks on. You don't hear the kids outside playing volleyball. You don't, it's mm-hmm. just you don't hear anything. So it's wonderful. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about. Good Ooh, stuff. Lord, Good you have stuff. mercy. Yes. A, a lot. And Bree said something, but can't hear you because you're not in the microphone. <laughs> That's because I was off camera. And you're still off camera. Off mic. Off mic. <laughs> yeah. She found the mic. Ow, my ears are bleeding. All right, well, this is a bit of a learning experience. So we have a, a pretty cool cod, <laughs> podcast podcast setup, but it only has four microphones, and we have to pass them back and forth since there's 9,000 of us here, mm-hmm. which is awesome. <laughs> um, but let's start with bus ministry, can we? Yeah. And I think we should kick it off with the one and only, the one that brought 48 kids on their route. Woo! And that would be the pair, the, the mighty duo, actually the trio, because Leia's still involved with that We are very much route. a trio. It's Leia, Bree, and Liz. Yeah. But I'm a shadow of the trio. Uh, no, big false. You, I'm, well, I'm rude. just behind them. Uh, uh, oh, okay, it, long story short, <laughs> they filled up their bus so full that they had to get a second bus or a van, mm-hmm. and they filled that up completely. They did. Anyway, they almost doubled their route. They did more than double their route in one week. So why don't you guys tell us about it? Um, it was, I honestly, I was mind blown. Um, I, I really wasn't expecting as many as we were going to, as actually as how many we brought. Shocking. It was really yep. shocking. Okay. So this is what happened. So it started with outreach. Um, so this was Saturday and we were all out on outreach. <laughs> I actually, we started implementing Tuesday outreach. That's well, true. A midweek outreach. Well, that's good. Day. Right. Yes. Two yes. a week. Available. Yeah. So that de- I think that definitely helped. And I think that was that week, wasn't it? Yeah. That was that first week. So mm-hmm. obviously, like, more outreach definitely does help. But um, we were on outreach. Sister Liz led the midweek one. And then she also did the Saturday one. Super cool. And so we did our normal route. And then we went to go visit one of our newer families that joined our route from Green Route. And so we went to go give them a flyer because we did the candy rain this year. From our route. They stole our kids. That's yeah. true. Actually, they moved. Thank God we they moved. We didn't steal anybody. They moved to some place that we already had kids. And it's <laughs> awesome. Thank you for stealing the mic from they me. They just, just took to the mic that. back from there, Philip. <laughs> so your kids really wanted to be on our route. So their family moved their <laughs> entire <laughs> home <laughs> to our route area. Now, now for just people like that that are listening, do you guys do it for an hour, correct? Like during the week and on Saturdays or just like a certain amount of time you guys do just just in case people are wondering. I think Liz does never ending outreach. That's true. Ooh, she lives on outreach. Like She's like, I always. Her kids haven't seen her in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, during the week, I am doing just an hour okay. because um, I do about five o'clock. So I know all the kids are home. Parents are starting to get home around that time. So I'm doing five to six because the sun's starting to set a little early, too, Mm -hmm. and we're in a little bit of a rough neighborhood. I don't Mm want to have my kids out too, too, too late. Right. Um, Good idea. So Mm midweek, about an hour, five to six p.m. And then on the weekend, Saturday, it's usually a little, it's a little longer, I would say. Yeah, I would say we're usually heading out around 10, 30, 11, depending on what we need to do beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then typically we'll end anywhere between... I would say 12 to sometimes 1.30, just depending mm-hmm. on how many homes or areas oh, that okay. we're hitting. Yeah. Sweet. Um, right. But this last week, though, when we went to go see the new family that came on our route from Green Route, um, there was some kids across the street. And we were like, oh, we should go invite them. And then it was like the end of the of outreach. And I think sometimes by the end, you're just like, ah, oh, it's okay. We'll do it next time kind of thing. So... And then I asked Liz, I was like, do we have any more of our candy rain flyers? Because that's what we did this last week, and the kids absolutely loved it. Um, so she, uh, she was like, yeah, okay, well, here's, here's one last flyer. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Since we have one more, I'll go invite those two kids. Two. 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 Emphasis on two. One, two. Two kids. They're out roller skating. 
And so I went up and they went into the house and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, let me just go knock their door and I'll invite them, stuff like that. And so like a couple of them, uh, like a Five kids came out, and I was like, oh, maybe they're all just hanging out, whatever. So then we invite them, and we t- I finally meet the mom, and we, like, was, like, w- you know, explain who we are, where we're from. We'd love to have them come um, to Sunday school because we're doing, like, this gigantic candy rain. It's going to be awesome. And there's a, a bunch of other stuff that we did, too. Um, well, I gave the mom my number. I was like, okay, well, just go ahead and um, text me just because we typically um, text the parents before we leave so we can give them a heads up to get ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, we're in the van finally. I don't know if we're driving or not. Uh, Liz can remember more than I can. But um, I get the message from the mom, and I was like, when I mess- when I let her know, like to just message me like the names of her kids and stuff like that, or how many people she thinks that she's gonna be coming. I literally like stopped everything what I was doing, like including breathing. And Liz was like, <laughs> "We Ooh. were still driving because okay. you went." <gasps> and oh. I said, "Oh." Okay. My word, what happened? I thought I was getting into a car accident. Okay, yes, no, but we did not die, I promise. We're still here. And so I was like, Liz, you're never going to believe this. And she's like, what? And I was like, the mom literally just texted me that she's going to bring 15 people. 15? 15. Stop. And that was our last fire. That was our last wow. fire. It was the end of our day. We were just visiting those boys, and we were going to come home, like, it I was, was floored. Wild. I was like, and we almost didn't go and talk to those mm-hmm. kids. Like, that's wild to me. That's so awesome. That's awesome. And then you guys said candy rain? You guys going to have a candy rain? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Or I don't the know bus or the storm. That's, awesome. oh, that's pretty much what it was. A snack storm. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It was a huge storm. <laughs> it, was. it was. a little dangerous. But it brought an umbrella. It was like cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but Ooh. very specific food groups. <laughs> Um, and not, not really just weather involved. So. <laughs> um, but we, after Sunday school, we gathered all our kids eventually um, to the grassy area that we have. And we had two of our uh, bus workers heroically go on top of the modular roof. And that's where we did a countdown and they threw and launched all of the snacks and the candy and like the talkie bags and stuff off of the roof. And the kids were like, Wah! That's in a very safe manner there. though yes <laughs> so that's what yes. we did ah, sweet okay another really cool thing real quick i know i'm taking forever but um so i have the best mom okay and i know this is like a, a weird insert but this last week my mom was like she randomly texted me and she was like hey how many kids do you have in your sunday school class and i was like uh that varies and so i said Ar-, like we've been averaging like about 100 ish give or take uh several <laughs> yeah 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 about 50 less or more and so she was like oh okay and i was like but on our route it's about like anywhere between like 20 to 30 and she was like oh okay she's like well i'm at costco and i just wanted to get cookies for your kids and i was like oh my word and so like obviously so so cute (laughs) Um, thanks mom i know and and i okay i promise this is not a coincidence because you know the lord knows okay Guess how many cookies she bought for our route? 48. 48. No, oh, love 48 it. 48 oh, cookies she wow. bought. So every single person on our route that came this last Sunday got one. And I was like, I'm pretty sure those cookies were anointed. Okay? Like, Whoa. Was, I didn't know that. Yeah. They were blessed yeah. and highly favored. It That's was, cool. I was like, <laughs> out of all of the weeks, out of all of the things, like, like, I don't know. It just, I'm pretty sure that was a God thing. So I thought that was the wow. coolest, wow. coolest cool. story. <laughs> That's cool. I love that. That is awesome. So this is the awkward handoff that we were talking about <clears throat> with the mics. <laughs> but they blew up their route. Everybody together brought more than normal. We had 116. Is that right? 116 yes. kids. Wow. And green route, we that family that we normally pick up didn't come, and we were down eight, which would have brought us to our 125 mark we were trying to hit. Uh. So, so frustrating. But we're super excited about all the ones that did come. And, oh, this was cool. So I, I, I think I mentioned that. Uh, no, I didn't mention this because we, we were, I think we did this after the podcast was recorded. So we were on outreach last week, on the midweek, and we knocked on a door. And it was the first door. We knock on. The lady opens the door, instantly is interested, asks her kid if she wants to come, sign her up. Like, we're 100% on the doors. And then I get a call that makes me leave outreach. Like, I had no choice. I had to leave. We were 100% on that door, on, on the <laughs> signing up people. So we went back to the church. Anyway, we had to pick up somebody before outreach came back. And 
our, our percentage took a big hit because <laughs> it went downhill after that. But uh, the reason I brought that up is, is one thing for them to sign up, but it's another from the actually show, right? So oh. on Sunday morning, uh, one of our bus workers goes to the door, knocks on it, comes back with no kid. I'm like, are you oh. kidding me? I was so excited about this new door. Never came. Knocked on it twice. I was all bummed out. Fine, I'm like, I'm calling the lady because I have her number, right? Oh, okay. They sign permission slips. I have their stuff. Oh. So I call her and she's like, yeah, she's here ready. I was, I will not call names of that bus worker. But I was like, you go back and get that kid. You go back so right now. he said, yeah, they're ready now. I don't know why they didn't answer. But if I hadn't called, we would have left them. Oh, my word. Uh, Sometimes it does happen and you have to go double check. We would do that often. Yeah. Oh, so-and-so said they're not coming. Oh, let me go double check. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes we have to do that. Yep. And then today we were on outreach again. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, me and Peyton were on outreach and we were knocking on some doors. And the nicest people on the planet opened it up. It was hot outside, gave us waters to drink. Aww. We made them balloons for the kid. Just the sweetest couple ever. It, no commitment, but just a great interaction. I went back today, knocked on the door, signed them up. They're coming Sunday. So. Awesome. <laughs> Super cool. Right. Awesome. And they gave us more water. <laughs> and it was a hot. It was literally it was very a, hot. 100 degrees when we were on outreach what? today. Oh, Tristan, wow. was it brutal today? It was horrible. I wanted to die. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, that's a, a little bit more Wait, honesty okay. than I so, anticipated. So it was, it was a little hot then today. Okay. And she wanted to die. So <laughs> out of curiosity, how many hours of outreach does Green Route do? Week. Great question. Uh, well, we have actually been recording it, so I, I can give you a pretty hard number if I look it up. But it's around twelve to thirteen as a group, a, as a group. Wow, that's good. Per week. But per week. So, so what we do is like, well, I'll send out a text in the, in the WhatsApp chat, and I'll say, okay, and I'll give the list of all the names of the workers, and I'll say, okay, who's going on this date? Who's going? Uh, so we'll give them a midweek option and a, and a, a Saturday option, <clears throat> and then we'll divide up who's taking which one as far as transportation because a lot of them are under 18 they can't drive or under 16 and so uh we end up uh getting them all signed up and if they can't do that kind of outreach they'll do phone or text like we actually had four people that did phones and and no. text last week okay. i'm counting it though because they actually did it so i'll send them the list and, and i'll say how did it go and so they'll send back yes this one said yes this one said no this one said whatever so, so do you send them the whole list What's that? Do you send them that whole list? I divided it up in chunks. So oh, I got okay. everything that I had a number for, and I, I sent it individually to them and said, you know, f calls first, voice call, follow it up with a text if no one answers. Mm. So <clears throat> that's, that's how it went. But uh, as far as actually at the door, it's probably average between 10 and 12 a week. Probably you're in the chat, so you, you see it. And Erica, I was going to say, can I insert something cute? I'm a mom. <laughs> of one of the green route workers and he had to do phone outreach just because of stuff this past weekend and he guessed me mom mom is this okay to say how should i word this how do i call them and say this so we're going through and we're practicing how to talk to them and have this conversation inviting them to church he's like okay okay how did i do did i do okay when i talk to them is this text message okay does this sound right i thought it was really cute because he's not only outreaching witnessing to people he's learning real life communication skills that's, mm -hmm. true. that's a great skill to develop at his very young age what is he 13 i love it he is so sincere he is just he is so good i, had I to count the years i love going with him on outreach <clears throat> and neat. erica you did you had to do calls this week too right yes is that the first time you've done it like that um yes i was not gonna lie i was terrified <laughs> because i don't know spanish and i got a spanish speaking mom so i was like Oh my word, I don't know Spanish. This is gonna be super hard to communicate, but um, it was, the number was no longer in service, so. <laughs> oh, you just gave a thumbs up that the number's not in service. No. God was not answering your prayer right there. My dad, my dad was at home, he's the only one who knows Spanish. I'm like, well. Time to practice. I know, I'll I literally. i you a script, Eric. I literally, I literally yeah. Google Google like, Translate. I was like, no, there ain't no way this, I can do this. No tango. <laughs> tango Robert. Escuela <laughs> Dominical. <laughs> Iglesia. Oh, yeah, the yeah, script yeah. is great, but I wouldn't understand what they said in response. Oh, that's so she funny. She just like messages on Google Translate and sends it. Erica is so much fun. <laughs> Uh, but okay, sorry. I have one more outreach yeah. question. When you guys go on outreach, are you hitting new doors? Why are you, are you doing asking follow -up? me? You guys are the ones that brought forty-eight people. We should be asking you. 
because okay. we just go out into the wild and just and pick wing up it. all of San Bernardino. <laughs> Because well, I, you see one kid and you fall in love and then you see another kid and you're like, I can't forget them. And then you're like, oh, there's 25,000 more kids. We got to run and catch them. You know what I've, I've, I've learned about outreach and, and probably anything that you do for, for God is it there's, there's a million ways to do the exact same thing. There's no right way necessarily. I, I'm sure there are probably in theory wrong ways to do stuff. But if you just really genuinely have a passion for it, you're going to figure it out. I'm but serious. I think she had I've a good seen, question. Do you I, hit new I, doors? I, I do want to hear it. I do want to hear it. But but the my my point is that people out there like I don't know how to do outreach, so therefore I can't. And then they actually try it, and they pick up more than churches that have done it forever because they just they have a passion for it. You don't have to do it a certain way. Anyway, sorry. What? <laughs> what was your question? Did you forget my question? You didn't even ask it, did you? What? Yes. <laughs> he forgot it, so just reask. Brother Sorry, Philip, when bad. you guys go on outreach, my bad. Are, you, are you are you following up with your regulars or are you hitting new doors? Yes, on both. You're doing both, yeah, we do both. during the week and on weekends? So we, we've said this before, but we try not to expand our route bigger than we can hit every single week. Now, it's, it's stretching us like where we'd have to, we, we can't quite do it yet. But I want to hit every single door in our entire route every week. Mm. That's the ultimate goal. And obviously, we don't pick up every door. So I want to hit everyone. Now, the only ones we're going to avoid are the ones that say, leave me alone, don't ever knock my door again, or really, really uninterested. Like, and so we put on our address list, like we have an address list that lists every single door, who's behind it, and what their reaction was. So if it's Spanish, I know that before I get there. Or if it's uh, someone that says, I already have a church, please don't knock my door again. That's on there. And so I'm not going to knock their door every week. I will knock it once a month because I'm forgetful like that. You know, it happens. It, it happens. It happens every month, in fact. Crazy. <laughs> 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 but but the, the the point of that address list is so I can not have to hit every single door if I know it's genuinely going to be a get away from me response. In fact, there's one guy that says if you knock my or I knocked his door, he said I own this building. Don't hit any doors in my building. So I hit everybody but his door. <laughs> He don't control me. I mean, (laughs) he ain't my dad. No. (laughs) Thank you for your humble response. (laughs) But check this out. The lady we signed up today, it was from his building. So booyah in his eyeball. We picked up his tenant. So what you were saying is he was not speaking for everyone in the building. There are hungry hearts in that building. And we already had great relationships built with these people. So don't tell me I can't knock on your right. tenant's doors. You don't right. own them. Did you already talk about your popcorn? Thing yeah, on that here? was last week. Oh, yeah. oh I didn't listen. Pretty cool. I, 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 listen. Listen. <laughs> I only listen when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back and I'll listen to this one. Oh, my word. Anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. Oh, my word. Okay, we've, got, we've got to move on. Oh, it's already 10 o'clock, guys. Okay, it's Wednesday night after church. We just had a really good service and a, a longer than normal altar call, and here we are. People are getting really tired so i think we should maybe uh, transition into the gentleman's corner what do you think yes. i think that sounds yes. like a great here, idea here so we had the modesty closet and the guy's response was the gentleman's corner brother danny why don't you tell us about what you done so um it was actually pretty awesome uh like we said last week i believe or when we had our last podcast um the ladies have something for the girls uh, for the modesty uh, closet and so I wanted to give something for the boys because I just felt like they were being left out but so they were like you know I'm going to do something for them and so I asked uh, a couple of ladies that are kind of running it I said can I do it for the boys and they said yeah yeah sure so I went to go get some clothes or not I didn't want to go get some clothes I got donated clothes and then I went to go get some stuff like closets uh, little dillies and shoe rack dillies and all these other dillies and um, lots of dealies. yes, lots of dealies. <laughs> and so uh, we set up right here, right in front of the, the Sunday school room, and it was awesome. Kids came. Uh, Sister Kim, she said, "You know what? Just let everybody do it at once instead of doing it like um, it you know so two easy. two routes a week or whatever." Yeah. She said, "No, just do it, do it, do them all." I said, "Okay, fine, I can do them all." So uh, we set up. Erica helped me set up in the morning. Uh, Bree helped me set up that morning because I had to drive for bus. And so um, everybody helped, and then my wife helped uh, afterwards, and kids loved it. I mean, we've had pictures uh, on uh, the WhatsApp chat for our, our little Sunday group. Uh, I thought the boys were going to be a little more reticent than the girls. I thought so, yes. too. 
nice. I didn't think they were going to. I don't know how excited as a young man I would have been to to, to get a suit because I I don't like wearing suits unless I didn't have one to wear. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, but these boys were just loving it. Sister Leia had some what? No, the two young men that came, they got the suit jackets. Yep. They were so excited. And then they came Sunday night to church, yeah, with them. dressed yeah. up in their clothes. From Blue Route. They were, they were from Blue new. Route. Yeah. They were so adorable. I loved awesome. that. Yeah. And so all the kids. Other than Melly's giving them a Bible study, too. <laughs> Those oh, two boys. Sweet. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, and it was just awesome. It was just awesome to see that the kids really enjoyed uh, getting the suits, and I mean, they were all they were all. And I even bought uh, some cologne for them. And I'm like, hey, you guys want some some cologne to smell good? And they're like, yeah. And I even had a mom say like, you guys better get that. That stuff smells good. And I was like, oh, yeah, you no. All get the it. all the boys when they first came instantly started fighting over the cologne. They were like, no, I want it. No, I want it. I was like, guys, it's okay. We can all we all get like a spray. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was, so a, was uh, Casey Lynn, the captain of uh, Green Bus, or one of the captains, was t- pretty much t- told all the boys that if you got anything from the closet, then wear it next Sunday. And he told the girls, for the modesty closet, if you guys got anything, wear it next Sunday. We'll all be wearing our, like, the best thing, like, all of our Sunday best. And then Aww. one of the boys on our bus hasn't come for a long time. Like, he, he we've talked to him on outreach, but it's kind of kind of a meh response but he came and he was so excited about that modesty closet he had like bags he had like two bags of stuff he are he put the clothes on here at the church like a yeah. lot of them and lot yeah of them and it, they were all so excited yeah. it was so cool to see it was so cool yeah it anyway yeah sweet. that was that was it for the boys it was really it was really cool one of cool our kids on our bus we were taking them home actually i think it was one from the, one of the new families um it was a younger boy that was <laughs> had a bag of clothes and stuff and right when he got off, he's like, this is so cool. I'm going to shop there every week. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Well, that's, we'll be there next week. That's for sure. Yes. It was great. <clears throat> yeah, so the response was way better than we anticipated. Um, I, I think they they took more clothes, it looked like, than the girls took. I don't know if that's true or not, or maybe it's just the percentage no, I, you of know, clothes. I didn't know how they were doing it. So I just said, if you see something you like, take it. I think it was also because all the routes we're doing it on the same week whereas the girl there's modesty closet it was two routes per week split up and when the modesty closet started it was up in a room where you had to take like escort each girl it wasn't open to everyone it was more of a thing of if you saw them and you saw that they really were like showing an interest in church you would take them up there just kind of one by one it wasn't a thing of it's open to everyone. Come look. Yeah. It that, it wasn't open like that until we did just each route. Mm-hmm. And when we started doing that, there was it was more it was a thing of they had these little certificates that would say like for one outfit. So at that point, it was more of a one outfit. So there wasn't as much leaving. Yeah, I think that made it real special though yeah. too because they were like, I get one outfit. I can't lose this ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the boys, they were putting it on immediately. Yeah. Like, they were walking out with it, like, over on top of their other clothes. Yeah. Yes. I saw a boy with a really nice button-up shirt right over a hoodie, like a, a suit coat on top of that. They were, so they were cute. rocking it. Mm-hmm. it Those was pictures awesome. were cool. It was. So, that was uh, awesome. so, great, great thing you did, Brother Danny. It's yes, awesome. Yes. That in the modesty closet. Ten it's incredible ten. to see these these kids we pick up. And, and, and I... I I don't know if I can post the pictures. We we have the, these these incredible pictures. These some of these young men looking like just a little Gentlemen. apostolics. Yeah. Uh, yes. The only thing that you know is the hairdos a little tell. You know, but but everything else, I'm telling you, they just look like little little apostolics. It's yeah. so. And they were cool. feeling it too, like genuinely. I think you that could was tell so they cool. were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the modesty closet for the girls was was, I th- I thought such a. Uh, I don't know, like a revelation. Like this is incredible. These young ladies have no access to clothes, but it's just as big for the guys. And I didn't think yeah. it was going to be that way. Mm-hmm. I really didn't. But I'm, I didn't I'm think so either. just incredible. Thank that you, Brother good. Danny, for mm-hmm. that. Let's go into Sunday. And the reason, part of the reason, Sister Leia and Sister Bree are here, is because we did our uh, teacher-led Sunday school, which is basically pick a teacher. In this case, two teachers that pick the entire method of teaching. They pick who does what. They guide the whole thing. The idea is that they control it and they have ideas that nobody else has thought of and that they can just kind of take it in places that we never dreamed it could go. So uh, Sister Leia, Sister Bree did that. Why don't you tell us 
how you came up with all this because man you guys were quite creative sister Leia did 90 percent of it did. i think we just had way too much fun <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you had too much it was it was <gasps> awesome though so we were talking about that god can use anything yes and you told a bunch of stories which was really cool tell us about yes. it have you ever heard the book, If You Give a, um, a Mouse a Cookie? Yes, I love that And then one. he's going to want I more like and more and more. Book. So we opened the topic, and I had seen it <laughs> weeks ago. Which will preach, by the way. The sooner you look at it, the more info is going to come ideas. to you. So I started buying things and thinking about what do I want to do um, for my lesson for that topic. And I started preparing and then you know, schedules have to change and things move and then we just kind of adjust and go with it. We sure um, did. But we had so many ideas and I was like that mouse that they gave me a cookie and then I was like, but wait, I got to do this. But wait, let's do this. But wait, let's go here. The plethora of ideas she came up with, I was like, write that down, write that down, write that down. And yeah. we did. And we did. <laughs> it was a lot of fun and just working together with somebody. It's a lot of work, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So traditionally, we take, as you guys know, we break it into segments and assign each of those to different people. And it it it. It has its pros and cons. And the pros are that a lot of people get involved, a lot of creativity, a lot of people come up with some really good ideas. The cons are the flow isn't quite as good as we'd like to have it sometimes because right. we don't practice. We don't have time to get together and run through it every single week. Right. So they, maybe maybe there's not the continuity. But this time, you guys nailed it. And so you guys were able to almost do a, a drama-ish kind mm-hmm. of a skit for the kids that lasted from start to finish the whole whole class so, so. i don't know maybe i can just give you like a brain a, a peek into the brain of what i was thinking and then brie can Ooh, share okay okay I'm, are scary. we ready for this i don't know i don't know it's a scary place to be <laughs> but i had the lesson i had my thoughts my visions of what i wanted to do it was moses in the burning bush and how god can use anything and so my idea was ultimately to reach the kids that God can use them, no matter what their situation or station in life. So I wanted to incorporate in the final lesson the burning bush, um, the talking donkey. I wanted to incorporate the tree that eventually was cut down for like the manger and eventually used as the cross. How it didn't look like it was valuable in their sight, but it really became something very valuable in the hands of God. Mm. So that was my thought process for the final lesson. And then we were thinking, well, how do we incorporate all this together? Mm. So we did a scene where granny made a first time appearance and apparently the kids really liked granny. We had story time with granny. Yes. So I was granny and I had a couple of the other teachers be my children and I was putting them to bed and, Telling them a story. So I started off telling them a bedtime story. They fell asleep. These kids are a mess. (laughs) (laughs) Always got to keep these kids in line. She do. (laughs) But they fell asleep. Erica, you were one of them, weren't you? Yes, she was. She was the other granny kid. I was was the grandkid. They did an amazing job, by the way, waking up and they're dreaming. And as they're dreaming, we're telling a story, a Bible story. Can you um, quickly just kind of walk us through yes. the bullet points? Like you started off by reading a story. And if I remember right, a giant shark came and ate him or something. <laughs> yes. And so I terrified the kids with my giant whale story. And we played some Jonah. scary Jonah. music. She, she was reading the story of Jonah. And then she played the Jaws theme. It was theme. great. They were terrified. Dun-na. And I was like, oops, Dun-na. wrong story. Let's go on to. I kind of hoped you'd play baby shark right there. Right, frankly. <laughs> oh, you should have oh. just surprised her with the Notes for we next should've. time. Oh, yeah. I didn't even That'd think of that. Funny. <laughs> oh, that's true. We could record We're it. Recording it. So, <laughs> oh wow! We are actually Ooh. need to record that. We tried to record this Sunday, or at least we put out our feelers, but they were using the fellowship hall immediately after, so we couldn't. Mm-hmm. So we got to record that. Yeah, it was really good. We forget mm-hmm. everything. <laughs> yeah, we had so much fun. I feel like with this, I had a lot of fun. We I had did. a lot of fun. Erica, but we did you went have a lot of fun. Yeah, did you have a lot of fun? I did. She was an amazing grandchild. I'll take her any day. We went from story time actually straight into an object lesson. It was science with Uncle Bob. And we used one of our students who was there at breakfast. And then we could not find said student during lesson. I know. So we just made do and grabbed any old student out of the audience. Put lab coat and goggles. I still have no idea because she was. She said she had to go home home and then she had to come back. But she was back. Uh, She She, was. I saw her at altar call. She lives very close. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Uh, who knows? We just something like that. I don't know. We made do, and Brother Lee grabbed a student out of the classroom and went with it. We did a volcano showing how simple things like baking soda looks like nothing, smells like nothing, and vinegar mixed together when combined creates this. Wh- which everybody ha- has seen that, but you guys made a pretty gnarly volcano. I think it was awesome. So we started with a little volcano, but it kept growing, and I don't know what happened. And well, then it grew it into like a four foot by island got three bigger foot. Bigger. Yeah, it kept Boring. growing the size of my kitchen island, and I don't know what happened, so that's what we had in the well, morning. Well, from what I hear, you conscripted some of your students to help you make they it. They did, and they had no idea that what they were doing, so when they came in for Sunday school, they got to see their handiwork from the Friday class before. That's so neat. I kind of incorporated it. I don't know if this is cheating or not, folks. But I incorporated it into a little bit of a math project. Mm. <laughs> had them working, <laughs> make this work, and I had four pieces. Anyways, we did a math project with it, and they helped nice. to create the base of the volcano. Had no idea what it was for. And then when they saw it, they were like, what? It was really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, and you weren't even there. See what happens. The one time I don't TA for you. You get to blow things up when you <laughs> TA. We need to do that more often. No skipping out. <laughs> but we went from the volcano into a really cool song. I think it was so much fun. I could not stop laughing <laughs> during that song. Why? What happened? Well, well, I missed this. I can't okay, remember. So, uh, the premise of it is the grandkids finally fall asleep. Um, and that's, so we go into quote unquote dreamland and that's when uncle Bob came out. So we're in dreamland with uncle Bob. And then the next song that comes on is uh, still being in dreamland and very much until the end of the final list. I can't even remember what song it was. My God, my so God. Big. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys were stomping everywhere. Yes. Mm-hmm. There was so much awesome. up and downs. No. And I was like, Erica and I, I were like purpose. wanting so bad to participate. <laughs> yes, I kept like <laughs> moving. And I was like, I know Brie feels me because she's like, she was laying on my lap. And I was so like, they were laying on a cot on the stage. And I me did. and Danny were on the stage yes. stomping with everything. We did. The cot had. started moving and I thought we were about to fall off and like oh, roll or something. That, that was one awesome. of my fears. I thought it was going to happen. And I was like, how am I going to make it funny if it actually happened? <laughs> like, I was mentally just we were just funny. stopping in time with the music. <laughs> My God, it's so big. I was ready. So, it was, it was awesome. great. But and we had <laughs> Natalia, Elena, and Tristan True. do the motions for all the verses. And they did so good. Uh, it was so fun. They really did. That's I believe a, you, but we were pretty asleep. complex song. You know what I noticed, too, is three girls in the back, way in the back, I, they're bus kids. Yes. They knew every... Did they really? I've knew never it. seen them before. And they knew all the oh, motions to it. I don't know so how. Cool. I was walking around, and they were super involved. We even had a couple um, visitors, parents, um, that were into the song. Yeah, really? I saw that, too. I saw that too. So I mean, it was a pretty fun. jazzy song. It was, it was so. still kind of dark, so like the, there's that one big main light, so I couldn't see anything past like the second row. Mm. It was great. Yeah. It was uh, that's yeah. It was it was but a yeah, lot anyway, of fun. It was a funny segment because Eric and I didn't wake up yet, <laughs> even though there was one thing we haven't everywhere. said yet is: Did you guys hear how many bodies were in the fellowship hall? <laughs> we they did a no. count. We knew it was a lot of kids. A lot. It was many. I was told they counted a hundred and eighty people oh in the fellowship hall. Wow. This is a regular Sunday. This is not like Easter. This is a hundred and eighty. So if we take out, if we crazy big number of volunteers which i know there wasn't 30 but would it just say there was it's 150 kids wow, wow. so wow. I, I don't i don't see that number is quite, quite frankly sounds a little big because that yeah it's, it's a big lot. but i know there had to be at least oh, there 12 were, or 15 of us yeah teachers. I, I mean there there for yeah. sure was a mess of them there was a lot more than yes, normal we picked up lot. 116 kids plus our church is a decent size, and so that's true. Oh, whew, yeah. Lordy, have mercy. That Some place was popping. So, maybe. So <laughs> if you guys hadn't had their attention, it would have we been, been yeah. a disaster. Mm-hmm. We would I have been I feel trampled. like the kids did pretty good this week. We are, you still are going to have pockets of kids that are going to sure. just be busy, but I feel like the kids were really involved this week during the songs. I think so. I can't wait to get to oh, Horatio. Yes. Oh, oh. That was my favorite. So we're after not there yet, are we? Do we no, we're not reverse, there yet. Right? No, no, no. We're not there yet. That one oh. was good. I was oh, yeah. We did the song, okay. and then we did. Oh, and then we did the story of Balaam and the talking donkey, Keith which was hilarious. So it was. Keith it was is great. So Keith good. Is 
amazing. Uh, I was the servant, and he told me to fall asleep. And he, so he was like, he's like, just lay down here. And then I like just stood against the wall. And then like, so he like started praying. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but he like kind of leaned back and he goes, I said on the floor. And so <laughs> I'm standing there and I'm like shaking. <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> and I'm trying to breathe through it because there's kids like a foot from me sitting on the row. And so I like kind of just like crouched down against the wall. And then he like, I don't know, he like looks back and he just shakes his head really slowly. And I'm like, oh, please just tell me, just please know what to do. So he tells me, he, I like stand up. He tells me to go back. And then he like, I get sent right back to uh, him again. And I just could not stop laughing. It was <laughs> so She funny. got thrown in at the last minute because I realized oh, out of nowhere did. that I didn't have a servant and... Can't so find like, good help these days. Sheesh. Oh, no, a servant. <laughs> Tristan, you want to be a servant well, for the king? It worked Always. out. All I had to do was just listen to people. So It did work out. And Balaam and the donkey was really funny. Yeah, so it was Balaam and the donkey. And Keith in the chat, of course, you know, uh, <laughs> Bree says, oh, I found a horse that we can use for it. He goes, oh, I thought I was. <laughs> I, <laughs> said, I thought that was my part. The donkey. Uh, no, Keith, we're not going to make you. You are. We need you. The talking donkey. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. Uh, and then we had a very intimidating angel who did not have a flaming sword. He had a sword. He just wasn't on fire. He wasn't did on that. fire, so because I wasn't allowed hazard. to dip Dipped it, it in, in that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was yeah. saying. Next time I'll cool. get one, though. We have fire <laughs> that turned into a wand. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. I feel like we could have used a lightsaber. But that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then uh, I yeah. hear later several of my students have lightsabers. I could have just <laughs> borrowed one. There, from them. there's yeah. There's I, I, I would have just we could have found one. Just lit it on fire. Lit it on fire. <laughs> Dip it in gasoline. <laughs> and We're light not it even on fire. halfway <laughs> through the Sunday, and we still have some other stuff to do. <laughs> oh, hit. that's right. Okay, so light, we lightsabers and fun swords. Yeah, <laughs> it's always extended. Yeah, that, that, listen to the outtakes. So that one was great. The angel did such a good job with that. And then Brother Reuben, and he makes a great intimidating presence. Yes, very, is. yeah, like a holy yeah. bouncer. That's I great. Felt, so yeah. God Absolutely. can use a burning bush. That's what I felt. God can use a song. God can yeah. use a, a volcano. God can use baking soda, and God can use a talking donkey. Yes. So far, and so now yes. the memory verse. Follow peace yes. with all men. And whole We did a whole choir and Brother Phil no led them and Brother Greg. The yeah. And they did a choir and it was so much fun. The kids it were awesome. so into and that. We wrote that last year, by the way. Yeah, so last yeah. year we did Hebrews 12 14. Uh, and we have the kids do choir parts. So uh, the, uh, Hebrews 12 14. And then the, the girls say, Follow peace with all men and holiness and holiness and holiness. And the guys are, And you shall see the Lord. And you shall see the Lord. And the kids did and it. It was so the, cool. It was they awesome. were really into it. <laughs> it was cool. So they did this great. whole time, my grandchildren are still in dreamland, but they're right in the middle of each of these scenes, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, what is going on? What did you just see? So they're bringing pieces together, and then they get caught up in the memory verse, and they're thrown into the choir, and they're like, how on earth did we get stuck in this? Like... Like, did you How did you me feel? up for this? Yeah. So we were arguing over who signed each other up, me and yeah. Bree. And then I genuinely did not know the song. So we were like, Neither did I. Uh, and Bree was just looking at me, but Bree found out the song before I did. She like caught on so fast, and I was just lost. Like, <laughs> that's why we have choir practice. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So uh, super quick, uh, we have twelve doctrinal verses that we learn. Uh, one per month and pastor helped us pick those and so this is our second year of repeating those and the fact that the kids remembered the song from last year was pretty cool and that one between that one and Acts 1 8 Farmer John I, I really think it's going to be awesome that it, it, it's going to take some time mm -hmm. but I can't wait till they can sing every single They'll one of those songs. They'll never forget that. That's yep. true. That's so we point. went from that great choir into a history story. So we did outside of the Bible, but we Where'd wanted to... Where did you guys get this story, by the way? That's did you write it? Or was it... No, it? this is a real person. Okay, so I Horatio thought it was. Spafford. I told people that was. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so <laughs> I just... <laughs> it feels like it's a real person. I've, I've known about him from history, teaching history. Good old Horatio. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's, he's had a million. lot of tragedy. Actually, one part we didn't put in, we could have, but I was so concerned about time 
Um, he'd actually lost his four-year-old son. Uh, he, he and his this wife. This is all me, oh, by the way. Uh, so I feel like a modern Job. Basically, yes. is what it was. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty rough. He lost all of his businesses. Everything goes big fire. Then he said, "Burn down my house, all my businesses. I got nothing. Everything." <laughs> then he sends his family ahead of him to England, where they're going to go and like recover from their loss. And in this time, he I loses had three girls. It was three Tristan. Daughters. Who who were they? Natalia, Elena, and Natalia. Elena. Elena. They did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Really. Of really Laying it on thick. They're like, Dad, we can't leave you. You're going to die here. It was so heart wrenching. Yeah. So I, the, 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 oh. the story is that, you know, we lost everything. So we're going to uh, send the kids ahead to England because I had to stay and wrap up some things for the business. And the kids go ahead and yeah. go ahead, Sister Leah. Brother Danny put this great background. 12 out of 10. Did really, really great. Sound effects together of crashing and crying and I, this sounds really horrible. Please forgive me. But it sounded really good in the moment of them dying. It, it was very sea. fitting. Yeah. And he had yes. a picture on the screen So my girls of went boat. ahead of me to England and they drowned on the way because there was a shipwreck. So was a shipwreck. And, and this is he, a real story. This no, is really a real happened. story. This is a true story about this man's life and how he came about writing this song. So Philip comes in after the girls have perished at sea and he sits down and basically is very distraught. He's lost everything, his children, everything. And he's basically like, God, what do I have left? I have nothing to give you. And um, God moves on him to write this, the song, well, It we Is Well. We played a recording that Brother Danny wrote or, or yes. recorded. God talking to me. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a second one that accidentally didn't get played. Is Correct. that is that right? Okay. I thought so. It just got missed in the crossover and Sure. You no, know, stuff happened. But I think you kind of just jumped in and ran with it mm-hmm. very well. I didn't even notice. Kinda and like then we wrote the script. So Whoops, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh well. So I'm sorry, I was enthralled. But <laughs> he's he sits down and lights are low. It's a very somber moment. I promise you I started crying. It was so moving. And he's talking to God and he's praying and he begins speaking and writing the first verse of It Is Well. And it's so moving to hear him say the words after he's just lost everything and he has absolutely nothing. And then we start singing. He starts singing it and me and the girls come back out and start echoing him as he's singing it and then we all begin singing it and we ask the kids to sing with us. Oh. And a lot of yeah. them did. Yeah. did so there. he actually wrote that song? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Out of all of that. <laughs> so he wrote that song, It Is Well, It Is Well With My Soul after he lost everything, yeah. lost yeah. his kids. And the point of that, of course, is that God can use yeah. tragedy, tragedy to speak to And what was, what was so cool, this is kind of more on Sister Thomas, how she, when w- I was TAing for her class, I heard this story playing. She was, let, she was having her kids at school listen to it. And I was, and so I was like, this was literally where he was sending his family off and then I heard where everyone dies. And I was like, what in the world? So I asked her, I was like, what in the world is this story? And she's like, I'm having them listen to it for Sunday school. Me and Bree are using it. And I, didn't, I thought it was just like for a lesson, like just one lesson. I didn't know it was going to be like for the whole like Sunday school. And then... That's why I kind of started laughing when I found out what part I was going to be. Because I found out I was Horatio's daughter. And I was like, <laughs> I already know yeah, what happens you get before, two lines I, and you're dead. before I. Before yeah. I. So, <laughs> me, Natalia, and Elena were, are, were talking about it. We're like, she really killed us off after two sentences. We say two sentences and we're I dead. needed you elsewhere. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> that's I just, true. I had to turn into a moving bur- burning bush. <laughs> so, then from there, we went into. Into the Bree story. and Erica again, kind of yes. recapping and bringing it together. But again, in your, they're dreaming all this, and so they're going from place to place in their dream. Mm. So the next thing they go to is is Moses and the burning bush. That was so it good. It was so good. It was very. Brother good. Danny we was Moses. Yes, tell yes. us about that, Brother Danny. Um, we just had like a plastic little. It looked real though. With it looked really red good. Little dilly. So you know back. those fake little fires that always yeah. look cheap and they look like... Like the fabric that they, flaps around. But we yeah. used it. Pitiful. But we used it. No, exactly. it looked awesome. It looked I was in the back. I was like, that looks very realistic. It yeah. looked like I couldn't tell because I was next to it. It looked no. like flame. <laughs> I'm like telling you from the back. that was red to me. Straight up, <laughs> it looked like it was on fire. 
Okay. As long as the kids did. <laughs> it was good. Was like, it was really good. good. But yeah, it was good, though. Uh, uh, they wouldn't let me use real fire. I know. That would have been cool, too. Man. Did anyone tell you you couldn't? You keep, like, saying that, but no one ever said you're not allowed to use fire. It was very, it was very much like... I, you had a plastic Hold on. A inflatable sword and you were asking about lighting it on fire. I don't think <laughs> that would have been a good visual for the angel just to lose his sword and it we melt all over his hand. We sparkler for that. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's Ooh. fine. Next lesson. I'm not yeah. telling you I'm to use fire. fire. I'm just saying nobody's ever said you can't in, in a very safe and sane way. Manner. Yeah. <laughs> got it. So, Brother Danny, yes. you got to be Moses. I did. And uh, he was and just saying... Lord. I was pretty much talking to myself, but in this 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 skit, I was talking Can to God. Can you explain that to everyone? Why were you talking to yourself? Yes, Please. I, I will. So, um, but I can I, I'll tell it at the end because it's kind of funny a little bit. Um, so anyway, uh, she had me come in, and I was talking uh, to God, and uh, God was telling me, you know, this is holy ground. So I took my shoes off, uh, and He was. Telling me I'm you're gonna I'm gonna use you to go and lead my people out and and I was like how can I I I can't talk well like literally I can't really talk well and so that would fit me perfect and I can't lead and then uh, and then again it was just like I'm gonna send you I can use you and I'm like no I can't I just killed somebody and or I killed somebody over there and he was like no I'm gonna use you and I'm like ah okay so yeah. But I'm God, and I can use you. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Because we wanted to display all of his weaknesses. I can't speak right. I don't have the leadership ability. I don't have this. I've made mistakes. I have failures. I really wanted, you know, as Bree and I talked about it, we really wanted to highlight all the why nots. Yeah. All the impossible situations. So our kids in the audience, in the classroom, could see oh, I can't do what he just said, but God used him. Mm -hmm. So I really tried to find as many things as we could find in one setting, one, if you will, like skit thing. And then I came in after Brother Danny. He had kneeled down to pray, and he was silent, and then I walked in. Mm -hmm. And the girls were at this point back on the cot sleeping, and so I sat next to them and I just started talking to them as if I'd been talking to them this whole time. So you see, girls, God can use anything. Because that was the... Um, that's how you started that's before right. we went off to dreamland. Because as yeah. they were falling asleep, I said, God can use anything. And the girls said, well, what do you mean God can use anything? So that was kind of the idea. They were dreaming while I was talking to them. Mm. So I went on to talk to them and showed them like all of these situations. I brought out a caterpillar that if you unzip and you fold it into itself, he turns into a butterfly. That was the coolest yeah, thing cool. I had ever yeah. seen. So cute. I was like, I didn't know we made things like that. <laughs> he was supposed to be an ugly caterpillar to really emphasize the point, but he was actually super cute. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, <laughs> we could have helped with that. <laughs> but they got the idea. Mustard the all caterpillar over. turned into this butterfly. God can use anything. It looks impossible, but God can use anything. And then I brought it back around to the tree. We have this tree that's built into our decorations that everybody just looks at it like it's nothing. It's just sitting in the dirt, doing nothing. It's worthless. It's useless. But God looked down and saw that little tree and said, I can use you. And God turned it into a manger where baby Jesus laid. And then he said, I can use that tree when I bear the cross. And he used that to hang himself, if you will. I mean, he hung upon the cross to carry our sin to save us. And so how it looks something so small and insignificant that it's not. Because in the hands of God, it can be very useful, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So behind the scenes on that, how I was going to say about talking to myself, uh, so Bree came over like during uh, last week and was like, oh, let's do the music. So we did the music that night. We did the, the scene for Horatio and put all the pieces together. And I was like, okay, cool. Do you have the, the things you need me to record, the, the, the dialogue? And she's like, no, not yet. I'm like, okay, cool. My bad. And so a couple of days go by and I'm like, Bree, do you have the things yet? Oh, no, not yet. We're still working on it. Okay. And then Saturday... 
This Saturday. is why Brother Danny's the best because they were he has there to deal ish. with somebody like me. <laughs> Saturday, we came to practice and I seen them like, is this what I'm going to supposed to record? She's like, yes. And I'm like, okay. And I get home really late. I was about to say it was, it was Saturday night. Yes. When I got home Saturday night. I was tired. Well, well played, Brie. Well played. I was tired. And then she texts me and she goes, can I send this picture? It was, I looked at it to make sure. It was 12.07 at night. And I'm like, no. Yes, you can, Brie. And I'm like, and I still haven't recorded the things. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to record them at 5 in the morning. So I got up <gasps> Sunday morning, Stop. 5 o'clock in the morning. That's why I, I told you. I said I got to go to bed because I got to go up, uh, wake up at 5. Because I, was I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm no way going to stay up late doing these recordings. So I got up at 5. Oh my and I recorded Lord. all the stuff that needed to be recorded. Well, you didn't sound, you didn't have your 5 a.m. voice in those recordings. It well, sounded good. Good. <laughs> good. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Well played, Brie. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was Fun an times. awesome class. You guys really did a great job. We had a great altar call. Kids were praying. We did have a time restraint, so we were trying to kind of rush a little bit. But anyway, it all, all worked out in the end, but quite a great job. And uh, what about the toddler class? Can you give us like a, a, some, some nuggets on that, Sister Liz? Um, this week, Sister Lomeli helped me teach. We talked about a true friendship, so David and Jonathan. Um, we also did a skit. This one I also recorded. So I did a recording. Um, two puppets were there. Um, it was a cowgirl and Mr. Quackers, but he's very nice in my class. So <laughs> he is a very innocent little duck. And um, the cowgirl is telling the story of David and Jonathan. Wait till Mr. those Quackers. kids graduate to our class and they'll oh. learn the true oh, yeah. personality oh, of Mr. Quackers. I'm showing my children. I'm like, okay, this is my idea for this Sunday. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say it and ju- just listen and let me know if you have any notes. I finish my whole skit and they're like, Mr. Quackers doesn't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Quackers has a Bronx accent, and he tells really stupid jokes, but if the kids don't laugh, he doesn't give them candy, so they all laugh anyway. So he, he, black, he blackmails them into laughing. Yeah, he... That a really annoying... Uh, no, no, that's not it. No. no. Yeah. Hey, he meets the Quackers. I think he's yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hey, laugh at my joke, kid. Yeah. Uh, Throw a snicker at your head. I don't know. know. Something like that. So he was very kind in my class. But um, I recorded myself as both the narrator and Mr. Quackers. So the narrator's telling the story. Mr. Quackers is giving his little tidbits. And then on the day of, Sister Annalisa Mercado was um, doing the puppets. Like, she wasn't speaking, but she was just, like, doing the motions. Um, And then Sister Lomeli and myself were David and Jonathan. She had a really good idea to kind of play up the friendship. So she said, like, maybe after David uh, played the harp for Saul, maybe David and Jonathan went out in the field and practicing shooting arrows together. Maybe they went down to a stream and David taught Jonathan how to find the best stones, the best rocks. Um, So we were able to um, do that, kind of show what friendship looks like. Ours are really, really little. So, you know, oh, this was the best day ever. We didn't even fight. We had so much fun. I can't wait to do this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So it was a lot of fun. That's how the class was a lot of fun this week. Very cool. Awesome. Well, uh, it was a, another great weekend, and we did get some comments or a comment from uh, uh, James, and I'm probably going to mess up your last name, brother. Please forgive me. Pelletier is what I, is how I think it is said, and we have a, a WhatsApp chat. It's the Children's Ministry of the Apostolic Children's Ministers of the Apostolic Movement, and he has posted some incredible stuff in there about a big candy explosion that they had for one of their services. It was awesome. But he wrote in and said, uh, loving the weekly podcast consistency. Oh, we're actually doing these yeah. every week. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Let's try to keep it rolling. I like to hear our voices. Um, I think they just, they just want to know we're alive. <laughs> uh, and absolutely thankful you got separate mics. It'll help for sure. Oh, thank you, Jesus, again. Philip has a big brain. No, we had a small budget. <laughs> <laughs> I meant because you got the separate mic. <laughs> 
I was saying that's all we could afford. All right. Uh, so you've asked a couple times for topics to come. I'd love to hear a bit more about the structure of your and others. Weekly kids services also structure your route. Sounds like you've got a class for the little ones, super class for the five to 11 year olds. Guessing 12 and up is an adult service. How long is the typical Sunday service? That sort of thing. Love the incredible, all in caps, practical stuff you all talk about and that every episode is so real. Thank you, brother, very much. Uh, I'm just glad anyone actually listens. That's kind of cool. <laughs> they listen so they feel normal. Yeah, hey, you know what? If if nothing else, this will make you feel better crazy. about what you're doing. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but let's go back to his question. He said about the structure of our weekly kids services. So we'll just do this quickly. It starts at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Um, although we have some things leading up to it. Buses start rolling in from 9 o'clock to about... 10 o'clock, Orange shows up whenever they feel like it. <laughs> we have been yeah. here <laughs> on time. Uh, we ish. serve our kids muffins in the bus. Ish. So as soon as we get here at... N- oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the on. Then why was your entire drive? bus eating breakfast at 5 after 10 okay. last Sunday? They're growing children. They were still hungry. It's their fault, though. Technically, it was my fault, again. <laughs> because we couldn't fit any more people in the van so they by default had to go pick up the rest of what we couldn't pick oh, up oh and it'd be weird to oh, feed uh, some of them and not the rest I get it I get and it. the rule <laughs> is to never let Brie go alone anywhere because she doesn't return she doesn't return what? no <laughs> For what, a what long, that long mean? time. What on earth? What? She's not allowed to go because <laughs> when she goes in there, she gets lost. Lost to where? People. Oh, okay. Oh. She, Picking okay. up students. She's just way too nice. Okay, okay. Yes. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. She has to be supervised. <laughs> <laughs> we try to get there on time. Okay, my bad. <laughs> we'll do better next week. We'll be back on the podcast next week. Mark my words. <laughs> we will be there. Was on we'll time. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news, picture. Orange Bus, on time. <laughs> anyway, the bus is rolling from 9 o'clock till whenever Orange Bus shows up. Uh, food is served from 9.30 until 10. The icebreaker is rolling from 9.45 until 10. Class starts at 10, unless Orange Bus isn't back, and then we'll wait for him. You start without us. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had to start without you a couple times, but... Uh, this particular time we couldn't because you guys were you guys were running the you guys were running the whole day. Yeah. It would have been a problem if Granny's kids weren't on stage. No, I'm kidding. You guys were you guys showed up right on time. Granny's kids always had to do anything but sleeping anyway. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm anyway. giving them a hard time. They brought 48 kids. Give them a break. Give yeah. us a break, sir. They, they can be as late as they want. They bring 48 kids. Well, once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we have class from 10 o'clock until, in theory, 10.55, although we do uh, kind of take some uh, you know, uh, leniency with that. And, and we bleed it over to 11-ish, usually about 11. Altar call is over when it's over. We ain't stopping it mm-hmm. and whenever it's done. Uh, then we have kids playing outside. We have bounce houses, uh, the Sunday school store that they can go to, basketball, jungle gym. Uh, we let them do that for, what, 11.15-ish-ish. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. And then we get back on the bus and drop them off. And, uh, yeah, that's the way it happens. What was the other question? Uh, what's the structure for the, for the kids? So, we, yes, we have the toddlers, and that's what, what's your age group? I did not hear a thing you said. <laughs> 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 what age are the children in your classroom? <laughs> they are two to four years old. <laughs> <laughs> Two to four years old, and they have thirty plus in there. Uh, how many did you have this last week? She's an amazing toddler teacher. <laughs> <laughs> how would you oh. have real this last week? Oh man, we had. <laughs> I A wish lot. this was on video. Yeah, <laughs> we, we are hysterical right now. I'm so sorry. She's over there crying tears. right now. Tears she literally has tears. There's, I'm watching tears run down her face. We had nineteen in <laughs> class this week. <laughs> Nineteen two to four year olds. Okay. Nineteen two to four year olds. Then we have our five to eleven super class. Our twelve twelve to eighteen is in our youth class, which is split boys and girls usually. However, our uh, youth girls teacher is we'll call it on maternal leave. That's what we'll call it. And so they are combined currently. Um, and so they're they're doing it the, uh, having their class at the same time we are, and then nineteen and up uh, or nineteen to I don't know what the top end of college and career they have a class, and then we have 35. the adult class thirty five, yeah, oh wow, yeah. So there's there's a, a lot going. Um, let's see that sort of thing a little bit. I think I think we. 
covered most of that. Uh, but thank you, brother, for, for writing in and asking that. And uh, you, what we see coming from your church is awesome. You guys are yes. blowing it up. I would love yes. to hear your podcast when you put it out. Um, let's see. Last thing real quick and we are done. Uh, we put some lessons out. We put a lot of object lessons, weekly devotions. We're putting those out every week. Well, we had one recently we put out about uh, it was Sister Delaney, and she had her heart. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys remember that. It was like a, a glass jar, and she was told to protect her heart no matter what, keep the top on it. Well, she kept pulling the top off, and you know the, the evil one, Satan, would come in, which, which was me. Right? Listen, it was me in a, in a costume. I, I'm, not a, I'm not really the evil one. Dun, dun, dun. Shock. Yeah, and so we'd come in and you know introduce things into that into that jar into her heart <clears throat> over and over again. Okay, so that was the lesson. But this is what they wrote. We did the lesson this morning. Kids were so plugged in; they were screaming at me, begging me not to make the bad choice. And when Satan came in, tempting me or to change my heart, they were not happy with him. They were saying, "Get out of here, leave her alone." So she can oh, keep wow. her heart clean and make better decisions. They love that Jesus can make our hearts clean and pure again because at the end, Jesus, you know, she says she's sorry and God forgives her and her heart becomes clean. As always, hope if we do make bad choices. Thank you so much for the information. We're scheduled to do a Holy Ghost rally. Uh, we had a Holy Ghost blowout that night. Our children were all very responsible. We were in the altars praying with tears streaming down the face. We had two receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. So that just wanted to read that. That was so exciting. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Anything else we need to cover? Yeah. Next week, Bree and I are going to talk to you again on the podcast because we stopped laughing because we started a memory verse. On our bus, Ooh. and anybody that learns it this week gets to pie us in the face no. from our bus. Oh, every and each of them, each child gets that to pie? learns it. How what if there's like fifty Each child cats? that learns it can pie me. In I'm going to go learn pies. it. Yeah, well, I already know no, it. You're not allowed to. <laughs> I'm going to ride your Children bus, and I'm going to pie on you. Our bus only. Oh, wow. but I'm very excited about it. I am we going to be on it. the street when you bus pulls up. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to talk. I'm just shut down. <laughs> we made a chant for it, and there was a kid that came on our bus for the first time last Sunday, and on the way home, he was singing it on his own. He learned it on oh, his own. Oh, cool. I'm so excited. Well, okay, would you put it that way? <laughs> That's awesome. Great, great, yeah. great job. That's cool. so cool. All right, uh, so uh, we, this is, we have created something called the Apostolic Podcast Network Link Tree whatever slash apostolic podcast network or apostolic Sunday school.com slash APN. And it's just a list of all the apostolic podcasts. And, and this is just one of many. So we just want to uh, shout out another podcast to go listen to another children's ministry podcast, but the Jason Ashley, it's called growing up with Papa. Oh, I yes. gotta listen to it. The guy's got that. just the greatest voice it, ever. Except one time I don't listen to it very late at night anymore because my kids were listening to it at night and then we fell asleep and then the bugle sound <laughs> <laughs> and I ran to my kid's room at like 11.30 at night to, <laughs> to trip it off. <laughs> so, Brother Ashley, you have a great podcast. Yes, However, yeah. the bugle does, does things. I listen to it. It's good. Yeah, it's no, good. it's awesome. Good I stuff. love the hair and the biscuit. All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Everybody here, everybody out there, if you have any questions or concerns or topics you want us to cover, send an email to info at apostolicsendingschool.com, and we will do our best to answer it. All right. We'll see you later. God bless. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. I had to hit the outro music. All right. We'll see you later. God bless. See you next time. Bye.